Hello boys and girls. The story I have for you today is called The Button Box. The author is Marguerite S. Reed and it's illustrated by Sarah Chamberlain. The author, Marguerite S. Reed, began collecting buttons when she was eight years old. I hope you enjoy the story. The Button Box My grandma has a special box. I like to play with what's inside. I swirl the buttons round and round, then pick the ones I like. Ten have flowers painted on them, just like Grandma's china dishes. I like to sort those first. Next, I look for sparkly buttons. I pretend they're jewels that once belonged to kings and queens and movie stars. Some buttons are covered with satin, velvet, or corduroy. They make me think of fancy clothes. There are metal buttons for overalls and jeans and leather ones from cowboy shirts and sweaters. This one looks like it came from Grandpa's winter coat. Grandma says these small ones came from shoes worn long ago. Next, I sort the shiny buttons that come from uniforms. I line them up like marchers in a big parade. The one with the eagle, I call Mr. President. I pull out all the pearly ones and make a rainbow pattern. When does little change to big? I can never tell. Some buttons have four holes and some have two. Some don't have any sewing holes. They have shanks instead. These make good eyes on puppets and stuffed animals. Sometimes when Grandma sorts with me, we play a special game. We stir the buttons, shut our eyes, and then we each take one. And Grandma asks, are these alike? Mine is wooden. So is hers. Both are round and flat. But hers is thick and mine is thin. She puts my button on a string. Whirl it around, she says. The string twists up. I pull the ends. We listen to it hum. Grandma tells me what some buttons used to be. Some were seashells, some were even sand. Big furnaces heat the sand until it melts. When it cools, it's glass. Wooden buttons come from trees 
And the deer shed their antlers every winter and grow new ones in the spring. I like the buttons made from old horns. When it's time to put the buttons back, I pretend that I'm very rich, counting all my gold. I like to feel the buttons then. The bumpy and the smooth. I like the way they sound. Clickety, tappity, falling through my fingers one by one into the box. Then Grandma puts the box away where it will wait until next time. I wonder who first figured buttons out. Maybe that can be a research project for you. Learn more about buttons and maybe create your very own button box. These are some buttons from my button box. I wanted to show you how you can sort buttons. Here you see that I have the big buttons and the small buttons. Then I also made a pattern with my buttons. The first pattern is by size. Big, little, big, little, big, little. But I also did a pattern by color. Yellow, yellow, purple, purple. Yellow, yellow, purple, purple. As you notice, my yellow buttons are not all exactly the same, but my pattern wasn't about their size or the number of holes, it was only about their color. Another way that you can sort buttons is by the number of holes. As we learned in the story, all of these buttons only have two holes, but the buttons down here have four holes. Some are big, and some are little. You don't see any holes in these buttons. It's because they have a shank, as we read in the story. These are pretty common shank buttons. Down here, we have some shank buttons that are different objects. The next set are just some unusual shapes. Some have two holes, some have four. We have stars, hearts, flowers, even a leaf. We have squares and Christmas light bulbs. You can do a lot of things with your buttons. One thing that you could do is make a shape out of them, like we have our triangle made out of green buttons. And I also made the number two with my pink buttons that have two holes in it. And finally, I used many different colors to make our letter for this week, the letter X. But before we end, I want to show you what I think is the most unusual button I have ever seen. It has three holes. In the story, the little boy told you about spinning a button. He told you that his grandmother put it through two holes of the button. It's okay if you have a button with four holes, you can do it with that also. Then hold the ends of the string and twirl the button. Be very careful when you're twirling. And then you pull. As you pull, you release your hands a little so the string can go back and forth. And if you listen, you can hear the humming sound of the dancing button. This is something I remember doing when I was a little girl. When you're all finished playing with it, make sure that you hold the string out and allow the button to stop completely so that it does not get tangled. That way you'll be able to use it again. Have fun. A special thank you to my friend, Miss Paulette, for letting me borrow her special buttons for our story today.